Good morning and welcome to worship at First United Methodist Church. We are so glad that you are worshiping with us today. But before we begin the worship service, I wanna let you know about a few up and coming ways that First Church is making more and better disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. This is First Things First. Our young adult ministry, The Wayfinders, is starting a new small group ministry for new moms, expecting moms, and moms of littles. They will meet on Monday, August 29th at 4 p.m. at the King's Common Playground. This will allow the moms to talk while any little ones can play around and have fun. If the weather turns, they'll head across the street into the public library. If you have any questions about this event, please reach out to our director of Young Adult Ministries, Steve Reese. He'd be happy to help answer any questions. It's not too late for you to participate in this month's collection for our food pantry. Remember that this month, our food pantry is collecting on behalf of Bucky's Food Pantry at ETSU. So all of these donations will be helping the college students there on campus who need a little assistance. Please bring in canned vegetables, ramen noodles, and shampoo, and place those in the collection boxes in the Narthex or in the connector. If you are interested in helping with dramas, skits, and movies, and other creative elements that could be incorporated into our worship service, please contact Pastor Jody or myself. If you wanna act, we have some roles for you. Or if you wanna film or edit videos, we have a need for that too. So if these or other creative outlets are your passion or your hobby, we need to know about it. We have a great amount of creative and exciting things planned for this fall, and we would love for you to be involved. And here are some things to be on the lookout for next month. A new Sunday school class is starting. Wednesday nighters are returning after Labor Day. The Wayfinders are taking a trip to the drive-in movie. The junior high is taking a trip out to Paradise Acres. We have a church-wide picnic at Rotary Park. And if you want to make sure you don't miss out on any of these things, a good step is to make sure you've subscribed to our weekly email. This email contains community news and prayer concerns, and you can sign up for it by going to firstchurchjc.org slash emails. If you're worshiping with us in person today, please take a moment to register your attendance by grabbing the pew pad found at the end of your aisle. And if this is your first Sunday with us, we hope that you will stop by at the end of the service to our welcome center in the back where we have a special gift just for you. If you're worshiping with us online today, please take a moment to let us know you're here down in the comments or maybe share this video with a friend. We hope that today's worship service will bless and encourage you. That's all we have for now, but we'll have more for you next time on First Things First.
Good morning. Please join me in reading the call to worship. Blessed are those whose way is blameless, who walk in the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who set their minds on God's wisdom and knowledge. Blessed are those who fill their souls with God's righteousness and peace. Blessed are those whose strength ushers in God's justice and mercy. Blessed are those who praise God with an upright heart. Blessed are those who put God in the living God. Let us pray. Holy and faithful God, through Jesus Christ, we have come to trust in you and rejoice that you call us your own. As we open ourselves to you in worship, speak to us, show us your ways, and inspire us to use the blessings we receive to serve you and to love our neighbors, so that all may come to know the joy and hope found in our Savior, Jesus Christ, in whose name we pray, amen. and we are constantly surrounded by God's blessings, but still we are prone to wander away from the God we love. Trusting in God's mercy, let us seek reconciliation as we confess our sins. Let us pray. Wise and all-knowing God, you see our hearts so clearly. You know our hidden secrets and our selfish desires. You know our thoughts and actions that cause pain and separation. You know our hateful words, cruel gossip, and judgmental attitudes. You know when our stubborn ears fail to listen for your voice. You know when we willingly ignore your commandment to love one another. Forgive us when we act contrary to your will and teaching. Cleanse our hearts by the power of your Spirit, that our lives may mirror your perfect love and worthily magnify your holy name.
With compassion, God hears us. With gentleness, God calls us. With joy, God embraces us. My friends, hear and remember the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven and freed to try again. Thanks be to God. Amen. You may be seated. One of the scribes came near and heard them disputing with one another. And seeing that he answered them well, he asked him, which commandment is the first of all? Jesus answered, the first is, hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. Then the scribe said to him, you are right, teacher. You have truly said that he is one and besides him there is no other, and to love him with all the heart and with all the understanding and with all the strength, and to love one's neighbor as oneself. This is much more important than all whole burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. After that, no one dared to ask him any question. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? Lord, our Lord, you are God alone. We long to love you with all our hearts. So keep the knowledge of your love for us forever burning in our hearts. We long to love you with all of our souls. May we rejoice in your goodness from deep within our being and may our lives be a hymn of praise to all that you are. We long to love you with all our minds so draw to our attention whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable. We long to love you with all of our strength. So may the hands folded now in prayer reach out into the world to build up your kingdom, to bring healing to the sick and strength to the weary, justice to the oppressed, and peace to the distressed. Lord, we pray that we could learn to love our neighbors as you love them, as you love us. We pray that the love that you have poured out into each heart might overflow into your world as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen.
our women's Bible study began in February of 2021 and had to begin online because of the precautions we were taking back then. But it has continued and has met online through that spring and in the fall of 2021 it started meeting both in person and online and it still meets in person and online or by phone for those who need it as a way to let everyone be connected who is available. The class has about 15 attendees most weeks, sometimes a little less, but they, they are a faithful group. And Pastor Jody teaches a scripture-based study that sometimes includes some DVD components to watch to get some further learning. The group has studied the miracles of Jesus, the final words of Jesus, and biblical characters of Ruth and Jonah and Elijah and Rahab. And right now, they are studying Hagar, this study you can see here. They, uh, they even once let me substitute teach at the women's Bible study and were uh, very nice to me and welcomed me. And I am sure they would welcome anyone who wanted to join them. They meet on Tuesdays at 1 o'clock, as you can see, down in the open door classroom, which is on the main level uh, as you come into the building through the connector uh, right underneath the sanctuary. This class is a wonderful opportunity that our church offers to provide nurture and spiritual growth. But if they were to meet up here this week with the AC not working, or if the internet that allowed them to connect with others went out, or if they didn't have any curriculum to guide their studies, it would probably make that class not quite as successful as it has been. But because you support First Church with your prayers and your presence and your gifts and your service and your witness, those aren't problems that hold this back. And this, this Bible study is a ministry that, that can help people. And other Bible studies like it and other ministries we do can lead us to make more and better disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. It is your support and your faithfulness that allows these ministries to continue. And we thank you for the way that you support this church and its ministries. If you want to support this church financially today, you can do so by, by leaving an offering in one of the offering boxes, or you can go online to our website, or even uh, through a mobile device, which for a while was an issue, but we have remedied, uh, and you can give that way as well. But there are so many things that come from this good and generous people, and so let us thank God for these things. Dear Lord, we thank you because our lives are filled with blessings, blessings that you have poured out for us. This is the self-giving way of Jesus. So may this self-giving way become our way as we share these gifts to do your work in the world. Amen.
Today we are beginning a new series studying the life of David, who is called a man after God's own heart. He's considered Israel's greatest king, and he is a part of God's great plan of salvation leading to Jesus. David's name is mentioned more than a thousand times in the Bible. And as we look at his story, we will see many of our own challenges and successes. And we will also see how Jesus is the true king, the greatest king. Our scripture lesson is from 1 Samuel chapter 16, verses 1 through 13. The Lord said to Samuel, How long will you grieve over Saul? I have rejected him from being king over Israel. Fill your horn with oil and set out. I will send you to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided for myself a king among his sons. Samuel said, How can I go? If Saul hears of it, he will kill me. And the Lord said, Take a heifer with you and say, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Invite Jesse to the sacrifice, and I will show you what you shall do. And you shall anoint for me the one whom I name to you. Samuel did what the Lord commanded and came to Bethlehem. The elders of the city came to meet him, trembling, and said, Do you come peaceably? He said, Peaceably, I have come to sacrifice to the Lord. Sanctify yourselves and come with me to sacrifice. And he sanctified Jesse and his sons and invited them to the sacrifice. When they came, he looked at Eliab and thought, Surely the Lord's anointed is now before the Lord. But the Lord said to Samuel, Do not look on his appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Then Jesse called Abinadab and made him pass before Samuel. He said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Then Jesse made Shammah pass by, and he said, Neither has the Lord chosen this one. Jesse made seven of his sons pass before Samuel, and Samuel said to Jesse, the Lord has not chosen any of these. Samuel said to Jesse, Are all of your sons here? And he said, There remains yet the youngest, but he's keeping the sheep. And Samuel said to Jesse, Send and bring him, for we will not sit down until he comes here. He sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy and had beautiful eyes and was handsome. The Lord said, Rise and anoint him, for this is the one. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the presence of his brothers, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David from that day forward. Samuel then set out and went to Ramah. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God.
My mom always told me this catchy little phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. See, y'all know it. She didn't make it up. She said it about books sometimes, but she also said it about food and stores and people. Sometimes she said it when the outward appearance was bad, but the inside was good. That was especially related to food. Sometimes she said it when the outward appearance was good, but the inside was bad. Like this really cute store that I like to shop in, and she would have to remind me that every toy I would buy would break immediately. So that came up a lot. And I find myself saying and thinking it often when I go to a new place or I meet a new person or try a new food. And I'm trying to teach my kids this same idea. Now I know we've all heard this phrase and we've all probably used it from time to time and we've all experienced something or someone where the outside didn't match the inside. Also, we probably have judged a book or something or someone by its cover. So we understand God's words to Samuel when God says, The Lord does not see as mortals see, as humans see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. What we learn from this passage about David and Samuel is that What's in our hearts matters, not just the things that we do or the way that we look or the the things that others can see, but our hearts, our feelings, the, the part of us that we consider ourselves. God looks at the heart of David and he saw someone after God's own heart. Now today, we need to ask ourselves, What is God's heart like, and what does God see in our hearts? Earlier in the book of Samuel, we read that the people of Israel have demanded a king. They had previously been ruled by judges that God had appointed to them. The judges were local leaders who were there for temporary roles, and they functioned a lot more like military than monarchy. The people of Israel wanted a king, though, because they thought a king might unite the tribes and bring the people together under one ruler. But under the rule of judges, God was meant to be their uniting force. God was their only king. Now, the judges weren't perfect, and if you want some interesting stories, read that whole book. They made mistakes, and they did their own things from time to time. But God knew also the faults and the failures of the monarchy. The people did not care. They wanted a king like all the other nations had, and they demanded that Samuel get them one. So God told Samuel to listen, to do what they said, to give them what they wanted, and the people, well, God said to the people, you have rejected me as your king. And God gave the people Saul to be their first king. Now, on the outside, Saul seemed like the perfect choice to be king. He was from the line of Benjamin. His family was wealthy. They were leaders in the community. He was handsome. The scripture says, there was not a man among the people of Israel more handsome than he. He stood head and shoulders above everyone else. Samuel anointed Saul as ruler over the people of Israel, and God gave Saul a new heart, and the Spirit of the Lord was upon Saul. For a little while, everything seemed fine, but then 
Saul made an unlawful sacrifice and he didn't follow God's commands when he went into battle and a lot of other stuff. And God said to Samuel, I regret that I made Saul king. Now Saul looked like a good king on the outside, but on the inside, Saul was not following God. And even though God had given him a new heart, it wasn't enough. Saul was not a man after God's heart. So God chose a new king. So far, the people of Israel, God's people, have rejected God as their king with their hearts. They demand a king. They've shifted their loyalty. They've shifted their hearts to another. They want to look like other nations because they saw something that looked good on the outside without knowing what it was like on the inside. And then Saul looked good on the outside, but he rejected God in his heart and he went for power and possessions and stuff that looks good on the outside. But God doesn't look on the outside as mortals, as humans do. God looks on the heart. So God sent Samuel to Bethlehem to anoint a new king, to choose from the sons of Jesse. While Saul is still the king, now this part of the story uh, sometimes gets overlooked. Saul is still the king, and Samuel, who works for the king, goes to find a new king. Now, that's some dangerous business. That's like treasonous business that Samuel is getting into. But God says go, so Samuel goes. Now, Jesse starts with his oldest son because that's the custom. And the firstborn is the heir, and he's the biggest, and he's the strongest. And Samuel takes one look at Eliab, and he says, surely this is the Lord's anointed. He's big, and he's strong, and he looks like a king. But God says, do not look on the appearance or on the height of his stature, because I have rejected him. Remember, Saul was big and strong and tall. He stood head and shoulders above the rest. But God rejected him, regretting that he had ever made Saul the king. Clearly, height is not a predictor of a good king. So keep that in mind. So God passes over Jesse's sons that are present, and Jesse has to send for his youngest, David, who's out tending the flocks, who's a shepherd. That little shepherd boy in the field is so insignificant and so obviously not going to be chosen that he doesn't even gather with the other sons to meet Samuel. David is said to be handsome, but he is the youngest of I don't even know how many sons, And it puts him in a very low place in his family and in society. And yet, God looked at the heart of David and saw someone after God's own heart. For the Lord does not see as mortals see. They look on the outward appearance, but the Lord looks on the heart. Now, David isn't perfect, and we will see over the next several weeks that he is far from perfect. But there is something in David that God can use. Samuel anointed David, and the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon David. But God didn't have to give him a new heart the way he gave Saul a new heart. David's heart could already be used by God, and that's what matters to God. And this is good news for us. It didn't matter that Saul was wealthy and handsome and head and shoulders above the rest. He failed God and God rejected him as king. And it didn't matter that David was the youngest and the smallest and he knew nothing about being king. God looked at his heart and chose him. And the same is true for us. What we have and what we look like and what the world might see as success or power or authority, none of that matters to God, not in that way. What matters is the heart. 
And so we must do as Jesus said in that greatest commandment that we heard read, love the Lord your God with all of your heart and your soul and your mind and your strength. Give your heart to God. Make God your first and deepest love. Jesus reminds us that we cannot serve two masters. The people couldn't demand a king and still keep God as their king. And we can't give allegiance to God and to someone or something else. But, God, but David reminds us, and as we'll see throughout this series, that our hearts can be fickle. Israel's heart, Saul's heart, even David's heart was fickle. They all fail and they all fall short from time to time. And so will ours. We will make mistakes. We will fail and we will fall short. Only one heart remains eternally faithful. And that is Jesus. Jesus is the true one after God's own heart. Because God's heart is for us. God's love for us is seen in Jesus, in his life, death, and resurrection. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, Jesus Christ. Jesus loved us by giving us his life. And Jesus loves us still. Jesus is the embodiment of God's love, God's heart for us. And when we seek to be like Christ, to be after God's own heart, we must love God with our whole heart and love our neighbors as ourselves, as God loves them, and see others as God sees them. Thanks be to God that God does not judge us by our cover. God doesn't look on the outward appearance. God looks at the heart. And we must also strive to look at the heart of others, to see beyond the flash and fame and glory, to see beyond the power and prestige and authority and look at the heart and see what's really there. Likewise, we must strive to look beyond the faded, worn out, weathered exterior, beyond the poverty and powerlessness, and beyond the outside and see the goodness that God sees. That's what it means to be after God's own heart. And so may my heart and your heart be after God's own heart. Let us pray. Almighty and loving God, you do not look on the outside, but you look at the heart. Help us to give you our hearts, that our hearts may be in tune with your heart. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Will you stand and sing with me? Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live for you alone. Every breath that I take. Every moment I'm away, Lord, have your way in me. This is my desire.
Thank you all so much for worshiping with us today and joining us here in person and online. And if, it, if this is your first time or your first time in a very long time, please check out our Welcome Center right straight back out those doors into the parlor. We have a small gift for you to say thank you for worshiping with us today. And as you go from this place, may God's heart see in you a heart that is after God. And may you look upon your neighbor, your friends, your family, all of those that you encounter and see what God sees. The heart. Go in peace. Amen. Lord, I give you my heart. I give you my soul. I live. 